okay, here's a chapter that really gets into kind of a little bit of the math part of this class, but it's not bad. And I want to stress that it's not about doing formulas. It's about coming up with the right values to summarize your data uh, with point estimates. And so um, this chapter really focuses on measures of location and variability. And I want to stick to that um, as we cover this. Again, this is a chapter or a video that's giving you exposure to this stuff. To really learn it, you got to go into the homework, you got to give it a try, try the practice uh, exercises, go through the show me and guided examples in the homework manager, and that's how you're really going to uh, learn this. A lot of this stuff you've done before. You have done an average. You have done a median and a mode. I'm not teaching you anything new here. What might be a little bit different is variance and standard deviation, but I know you'll be able to do it. Also, I'm not really concerned with the fact if you can do it by hand as much as I am concerned about can you do it uh, either by hand or Excel, and I recommend using Excel, and then being able to understand what you're looking at. This chapter really is our building block for what we're going to do in future chapters. We're going to do things like look at the distribution of our data. And without knowing how much our uh, values vary, how can we really determine that? And so when we look at um, measures of location, what are we saying is we're saying we've got this large set of data and I want to know the middle point. What is the middle point? And that's really what we're talking about with that. And then variability is how much does our values vary from the mean. So if I say the average height of a class is five foot eight, well, not everybody's exactly five foot eight. Some people could be over six foot, some people down is, uh, at five foot, and so your data varies. And when your data varies, that's what uh, those measures can help us with. So it's about learning with descriptive statistics, the numerical measures, that we can use to be able to find the middle point of data and how much our data varies from that middle point. And that's really what this chapter is all about. So some of the different things when it comes to location, what do we care about? Mean, median, and mode. Also in here is weighted mean and geometric, which I'm not gonna cover. I just wanna get through mean, median, and mode for the exposure point. And then I'm gonna look a little bit at percentiles and quartiles just to give you a little bit of uh, exposure to that as well. Again, it should be stressed that we are looking at a point estimate here. In almost every case, that's never really the actual value. It's just what is at that middle point. Um, so it doesn't happen as often as, uh, especially in terms of continuous data. For example, when I talk about um, height, the average height of a person in a class, if I said it was five foot eight, it's not technically five foot eight, it's five foot eight point five eight four two one. How many people in the class are exactly that? Probably none, but it's at least a middle point of where all the data is. So that's really what we're focusing on. It's a point estimate, and then how much does our data vary from that? Again, we're looking at mean, and when we talk about mean, let's get right into the formula for it. I don't want you to be scared of these formulas. It's not that difficult to really understand. And when you look at this, um, I want you to, to understand what X is and N is. So I'll tell you what, let's draw something up here and we can kind of give an idea of really what we're looking at. So I'm just gonna put a couple of values up here. Let me use a better marker. There we go. And let's see, I've got how about two, three, five, five, and six. So two, four, five different values. And what do I want to do with those values? Well, each value is a value of x. So you've got x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. So with that, that tells you that we have five different variables. And what is our sample size? Well, how many values do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, and five. 
each value of x, if I were to sum them up, and that's what that sigma sign uh, tells you, and when I sum up all the values of x with that i representing an integer, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, so if I add up 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6, looks like we've got 21. So this equals 21. If I get that right, you better check my math. We got 5 plus 6, that's 16, 19, 21. And then we've got a sample of 5. So in this case, what did we do? We summed up the values that we have, and we have a total of 5. And then when we get that, that's our numerator, which is what you see there by the sum of the values of the n observations. And then that equals a value. So I think we're at 4.2. Lucky I made my math kind of easy. So that's how you come up with an average. And an average is, is very easy to uh, come up with. You've been doing that for years. We all use that as a point estimate. Now, are any of those values actually 4.2? No. It's, again, just a value that's sort of in the middle. Now, that's for the mean. I'm going to, um, since I've got, I'll tell you what, I'll leave that up there. Let's get into the next little bit here. And if we had a population, now you should know the difference between a mean and a population. If you have a population, now what we're looking at is nothing different in how you do it. The symbols are different. So it's mu instead of x bar. It's capital N instead of lowercase n. It's capital X instead of lowercase x. And that's it. But everything I just did, if this was a sample, that's what it would be um, for what we're doing. Okay, so looking at it in terms of a large data set. Now let's take a look at a total of, let's see here, it looks like we've got seven different rows and we've got ten different columns. Looks like to me we've got a sample size of 70. If I wanted to add up all of those values, I've got a uh, total of 41,356. Divide that by 70 gives me 590.8. Now that would be my um, mean. Now my median is the middle value. And the middle value will be the two values or single value, depending on your uh, sample, that is part of your data. So if I line it up from the smallest, which is right here, all the way to the largest, which is over here, let's get a different pen color where it's red, there we go. And I will find that these are my two values in the middle, the 35th and 36th value. And so the average of those two would be my median that you see here. The mode is nothing more than the most frequent, and we can see we've got total of two, four, seven different uh, values of 550, and that is what our mean, our, our excuse me, my, our mode is. Okay, let's take a look again at our easy example where we have n equals 5. We added these up and we got an average of 4.2. What would be the Median in this case, well, the median would be the middle value, and that's 5. So the median in this case is nothing more than 5. And what would be the mode? The mode in this case would be 5 as well, because that's the most frequent value. Now, what if I did this? And so forget about the mean and median part. But if I did that, what is our mode now? Well, our mode now is 5 and 6. So when you have two different values, both of them would then be your mode. So you can have multiple values for a mode. Easy enough? Again, these are point estimates for helping you um, come up with your middle point of your data. 
It's just a good way of summarizing. So if I said the average apartment rental was 590, that would kind of give you uh, a little bit of an idea. You'd also see that your median is different and your mode is different. And that should uh, be a little bit of an indicator that your data is actually skewed. And that's something I want you to also understand as you start going through this data and, and these chapters. And a lot of times that happens because some values are a lot higher on one end than the other. So you have a lot of values down here at 550, 560, 565, and then you've got some, but very few, up in the 700s. That's what brings that average up. But it doesn't bring the median up because the median is not affected by values that are down here. So that is our different point estimates. If you used um, the uh, uh, used Excel to come up with this, you can see that there are very easy um, formulas to do this, and I highly recommend you go in and learn something about Excel and take this data set and come up with the average, the median, and the mode. And then look at your data in terms of percentiles because we're all um, forced to look at percentiles in everything that uh, we do. And so what would the 80th percentile be? Well, you, you scored, you got your GMAT score back because you're going to go get your master's degree and you found out you were in the 80th percentile. Well, what does that mean? Well, if there's 70 in a sample, what you do is you take that 80 percent um, or 0.8, multiply it by n plus 1, so that would be 71, and we get a value here of 56.8. So what that tells you is your um, your percentile is then between the 56th and the 57th value and if you want to get exact you then um, get an average of the two or actually a ratio of the two based on that 0.8. So you come in and you look at this you can see that the value would be somewhere in here and 0.8 away from the 635 to 649 would be this 646.2. Now what I just described, learn how to do that through the book and homework manager and the show me example and guided examples and you should be able to understand percentiles. Um, and what does that tell you? That tells you that 80% of the apartment rentals are less than 646.2 and 20% then would be above that. So uh, that is uh, at least a way of understanding a, a percentile. You can do this for 70%, 20%. Quartiles are nothing more than the 25th, the 50th, and the 75th. And by the way, did you also notice that the 50th percentile is also the median? And so when we look at the 50th percentile, it's also the second quartile, it's also the median of your data. Here's an example of what the third quartile would be. It'd be the 75th uh, percent, and the 75th percent in this case is right between 53 and 25. The 53rd and 54th value is the same thing, so that's why you see 625 as your 75th percentile. Okay, so we looked at data in terms of uh, finding a location, but what about variability? And how much does data vary? And so I'm going to look at the same thing in terms of our easy example here. <clears throat> 